But folks, head on over to the front page of TFNN, right under the newsletter, newsletter tab. You can find the Tiger Forex Report, Teddy's outstanding report he puts out every Monday with updates throughout the week when warranted. And don't forget, he's got a couple of great webinars out there under the services tab, talking about capitalizing on time with calendar stock option spreads, as well as Japanese candlestick pattern stock and option strategies. And it's always, I always say, Wednesday's a great day, Teddy. We got some action, and boy, we got some action today. Good morning. Good morning, Tommy. Boy, uh, quite the move. Let's let's kick it off if we can with with maybe yields. Um, okay. Boy, we got the drop going on. I mean, we, you tell me where you want to kick it off. I know they're all related, but boy, we have a three point sure. nine five handle. Three point sure. nine five handle, and by the time I let you talk, we may have the dollar index with a one oh two handle, Teddy. Right. Um, what do you want? Where do you want to kick it off, man? Well, I think interest rates is really obviously the place to start with today since it's sure. Fed Day. So, it. um, and I've been watching them all week very tightly. And the one thing I noticed, especially on Monday and yesterday, particularly, was that the euro. Now, not to confuse the euro dollar currency, the euro dollar future. Okay, that's the interest okay. rate future. Okay, because there is a euro currency future. This is the okay. interest rate. That's a very short term. That's a very long term. Short, it's a short term rate that has multiple months over multiple years. Okay. So then I looked at the two year, the five year, the 10, and the 30 year. Interestingly enough, the short terms were really leading the charge yesterday, meaning that the spreads were out of whack. Okay. And they, they started to catch up mid morning, which meant now when a spread is out of whack, what that means is that there, a spread is normally trading along either trending, whatever. But when it gets out of whack, it totally breaks away from that line. Okay. So yesterday that happened. Okay. The short terms were driving <coughs> yield, <coughs> yields down. The 30 year was dragging. Okay. Then all of a sudden you could see in the currencies that they were beaten up. So what's the reality with that? Well, the short terms weren't budging. What, then, then it was a nice little buy trade there, meaning sell versus the dollar. So like the, you saw euro and the pound and a couple of their currencies, they've been going sideways, but intraday they started to lift because those interest rate spreads started to come back in play. Today, fast forward, we are now back in line. When I say that we're back in line, it means like if you look at it, like you can pretty much eyeball it on a daily basis when they start to move and when you have to look at the relationships. The bonds will have typically, let's say if they're up 21 ticks, the 10 year will be up 15. The same is kind of like for like the two year and the five year. So let's say the two year is up or, or let's say the five year is up 10 ticks. Well, the two year is going to be probably up about six ticks, okay? Five ticks. So, in that relationship, they're pretty much back in line coming into the meeting. So, I like the stability of pricing, even though we're trending into it. And I think that's where you got to be careful because right now, if you look at it on a daily basis, we have a short term self single starting in the dollar index today because they've been. They were trying to, coming off of a, of a swing low. They started correcting back to the upside, but we've been going sideways for two weeks. You know, it's been a very tough trade. If you really look at the charts, they're very tight. They haven't really been going anywhere. Everything's been wedging, you know, and there's a lot of expectations that now we're going to start seeing this dovishness and stuff like that. I would be very, very careful. I think that the market is so far ahead of themselves and what they're predicting in the future. It's, it's, it's nonsensical. Here's the main reason why. Why was the Fed doing what they were doing for the past year and a half anyhow? To stop inflation, correct? Numbers have maybe, they've, inflation supposedly is slowing down and what have you, but we're starting to see some upticks. What happens if you cut rates, okay? If the theory is right that raising rates cuts and infl slows inflation, we're going to start to accelerate inflation, okay? So now if you start to accelerate inflation by cutting rates, what's that going to do? Well, you're going to shake up the market for sure. You know, I mean, you may see lower interest rates. But here's the other thing, too, is people think that if we have lower interest rates, the real estate market's going to get a jump start. Actually, the opposite's going to happen because what's going to happen is now people may be able to get financed, but people are going to raise their prices. <laughs> so you're going to see inflation in real estate also. So I think the Chairman Powell is in a very, very sticky situation with the S&Ps on their highs. You know, rates reflectively without them cutting have come back significantly since the fall. You know, I mean, the public may not like it and the, and the media may not like it, but that's the reality. It's a mathematical reality, you know. So I think that we have to really watch the tone that comes out of the Fed. I would be stunned if they do anything hawkish today, let alone even speak of it in the next like couple of weeks either. You know. So that being said, I think it's going to be a very tough sideways trade today. We were talking about that last week. 
And it really is that. It's become a, a little wedge. So I wait for a breakout because we really right now, there's some, you're going to probably have a lot of false signals that are going off right now. And I would just, you know, I don't think you're going to get the follow through until we have a confirmation after today. Because remember, it's a free trade after today. The Fed doesn't meet again for another two months. Yeah. It's uh, some great points, man. I can't wait to see what he has to say. Quite the the, the tightrope that he has to walk. Um, pretty remarkable that you get yields under 4% in terms of, you know, where are we going to move to even if, you know, the market's pricing in a lot, as you said. The expectations are pretty mm -hmm. sky high when you look at where we've come with yields. We're under 4%. We were over 5% at one point. So you talk about quite a recalibration on some of those expectations. And boy, when you look at where the Fed um, just where the market is pricing in some of those cuts, man, very aggressive in terms of three, four cuts coming in uh, potentially by like the middle of the year almost, which is just uh, going to be here before we know it. Watch, so we get to watch find the option markets because that's where, see, you got to remember, they put all these numbers out. Well, trades are put on based off of these expectations, you know, especially when they're coming from sources like the CME and stuff like that, you know. Um, it, I hate to tell you, like, just because it's coming from the CME doesn't make it the gold standard, you know? Sure. So, I mean, believe me, none of them are stepping out saying that this is what's going to be the future. <laughs> That's for sure, you know? So, um, now, I think you're going to see a lot of option activity, you know? And I would w be careful, you know, with the, with the S&Ps on its highs like that. I mean, think about this. If, if, you know, rates start to get cut, you know, yeah, it's good for bond portfolios because they've already seen an uptick since the fall. You know that all the money that comes in up until, you know, everyone's tax money is still coming in this month. You know, so where are they rolling that into? You know, they're rolling it into bond funds. They're, you know, they've been rolling it into the stock market. So be cautious with this January effect rally, you know, also, yeah. you know. So that's another thing I think we have. Well, yeah. it'll be interesting where we're at next week when we can really get a gauge on things. Oof. And it, it, like you say, I mean, just sitting at 5,000 in the S&P when we've been on a hiking cycle for almost two full years, which is remarkable, um, mm -hmm. almost to your point in terms of, well, where do we go from here? As in, we've already accelerated the highs. Not usually the case when we're at five and a quarter to 5.5 percent and we've been here for a while and they've been hiking for two years. So what happens when they start to cut? We find out. Exactly. Uh, can we jump to maybe crude, Teddy? Sure. As we got Absolutely. crude, a little bit of an elevated level. We've been talking about kind of, you know, that five. We inched to actually 79 on some geopolitical action this weekend, and we're back to 77. You know what, Teddy? I have a quick break coming up. Can you hang with us? Yep. And we'll finish it up yep. with crude. How's that? All right. Sounds Spoke, great. Stay tuned. We got crude sitting right at 77 bucks as we speak and yeah up to 79 29 we're going to finish the conversation with our man teddy kegstat when we get back folks stay tuned we're coming back in three minutes don't go away we'll be right back the gold report as a precious metal gold is still king it continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the london otc market the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter. A must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps off by 32, jumping around real quick to those tech companies. Microsoft is flat right now. You got AMD shares. They catch a bid on the open, down by 2.4% right now. You got Google shares in the red by 6.1%. We're talking to our man, Teddy Kegstad, folks. We're talking a little bit of Forex. We're going to talk some commodities. And I got crude up there, Teddy, with the 76.93 price point. What do you think about this crude action? Well, you know, since we talked last week, you know, for the past month, I've been, you know, it's been range bound and the 70 to 75 barrel was kind of my uh, target for it to be at. You know, I mean, obviously we have instability and, you know, what's going on in the Middle East, but that really seem, doesn't seem to phase oil too much. Um, yeah. But we did have a nice breakout to the upside a couple days ago. So we uh, finally got above $75. Uh, I now here's where you have technicals that conflict um, right now obviously we're coming off a higher move low we just set a higher move high a couple of days ago short term I think that we have probably come to a nice area I think we're gonna probably have a little bit of a pullback and my bearish absolutely not I think you got to look to buy the dips on it I would just be cautious at this level where it's at right now. I think we have a nice. good chance of probably slipping back to about six, to test where you know, 75 was resistance, now it's gonna become like support, which it seems like, like it, it is. So yeah. maybe dip to like six, down to maybe extreme of $74. And then if the if the trend is true for the new trend, like you gotta realize if the, the low that was set back in December, if that is now a, a longer term trend low, higher move low, then we are setting a bull tra trend up for the longer term going into the springtime you know sure. so and i think that right now i would look to be a buyer around 74 to 74 and a half if you're not long already i would be cautious if if you're what might be a good trade right now is to short ver going against the high from uh what was it on monday um so if you use that as your risk if you're bearish nice. and you want to see if you can catch a little dip i would yeah. not be it would not be short Below, above that high, above that high though if we take nice. out the swing high from uh, monday then i can see us going up to easily hitting 81 81 half and maybe have a little trouble there before we even head up to about 85 bucks a barrel then so it's a great take man i appreciate it as always teddy we'll talk to you next okay. week man all Thanks, right tommy take folks care. check out that tiger forex report always a great segment with our man teddy Stay tuned. We got quite a market. Basil Chapman's coming up next, folks. Live programming all day. My dad's back in the saddle from 3 till 4.